big thing happened. Uh, you know, we've gotten hit by the digital tsunami, it seems like, to me. It, and it is like a tsunami. It was like five years ago, you kind of heard about it. And then I personally didn't pay any attention to it, and I thought, oh, for sure, it's just going to be like a passing spell of bad weather. It'll come and go, and we don't have to worry about that stuff. And then it seemed like more people were getting into it. And, and then the other thing that happened is I had a bunch of friends who were talking who really got on the computer thing early. Not in terms of digital stuff, but in terms of scanning their pictures and the internet and doing things. And, and without exception, all of them kind of stopped doing their photography. They got, once they got the computer stuff, they loved it. And they were gone. And I just thought, well, I don't want that to happen to me. Because it'd be like, I'd call them, so what are you doing while well, working on my portfolio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm trying a new thing for my book. You know, and it was just, I'm getting my, my slides organized in a new file. And they were just, they were gone. You know, and I just thought, well, yikes, I don't want that to happen. So I pretty much dragged my feet as long as I could. And um, about two summers ago, summer of uh, about 2004, <coughs> I had a very, very, very painful summer in terms of shooting pictures. Um, the pictures worked out great, but I was doing a lot of uh, work for editorial clients, magazines. And editorial work is fantastic. It's, I find it really satisfying. It's really interesting. And believe me, you can make untold hundreds of dollars every week. It's really, <laughs> it is, you can make two, three, four, five hundred dollars a week. But really, no problem. It's awesome. Really awesome. And you're so lucky to do it because it's fun. You know? So it's great. So anyway, um, but I love doing, I do love doing editorial work because I'm a sucker and a moron, and it was, <laughs> and that summer was hard because I, I had a number of things that I was doing, and I was working in a very involved way. I would use a lot of 8x10, and 4x5, and 2 and a quarter, and I'd bounce back and forth, and I would use different cameras for different reasons, which I'll get into later. But um, I had a couple of assignments, like there was one I did for, I think it was Business Week towards the end of the summer, where we had to shoot a CEO picture I'll show later. A guy, like in a big, um, he was chairman of uh, United Technologies. They make, part of one of the things they make, uh, Sikorsky helicopters and jet engines. And it's a huge company. So I had to shoot him up at his, uh, the Sikorsky plant up in Connecticut with these humongous helicopters. And when you go to photograph these guys, oftentimes you only have a few minutes, right? And so I would bring a ton of gear because you never know what you're going to encounter. And also, many times you have to have several different pictures of these people in several different situations. You need like a close-up of the cover, and a picture with the helicopter, where you see the helicopter, and then another picture in another place. And so what you actually have to end up bringing with is like three or four or five studios worth of gear, so that it can all be set up simultaneously in different places, so the guy can walk from this one to that one to that one to that one, and then leave. And it's all done. So I'm not using all the equipment because I think it makes me cool, or Anything like that. It's just really, it's just being prepared. But anyway, I handed in the bill, and they just complained like oh, nobody's says, Oh, I said, Jew. I mean, that's a lot of money. And, you know, wow, we can't pay this. And I, don't know. And I just, you know, uh, you know, this is where good business practices come in. And I was just really, I'm never confrontational with my clients at all, ever. I'm a really friendly, nice guy. But I said honestly, it's not an estimate. It's not a proposal. It's. Um, it's a bill. It's not a bid. It's a bill. It's an invoice. You have to pay it. The expenses have already incurred. Now you have to pay it. You like the pictures. You like my portfolio. The way I take the pictures of my portfolio is the way I took the picture for you. Now you have to pay for it. I said, I know. Jesus, it costs so much. No, no, no. And I said, look, I didn't bring with my personal trainer, my masseur, my personal cappuccino person, nothing. You know, it's like, this is just, it's, it's camera gear. It's lighting stuff. You have to pay for it. So they did, ultimately, but it's a lot of money and groaning. And, um, but I had several jobs that summer that were like that. And I just started thinking, you know, this is awfully hard. And maybe I should think about how I'm working. Because it just seemed like too painful a way to work. And uh, my assistant at the time, I, I usually only work with one person at a time. I've never had like a big staff. And he, all summer and that earlier that year, he was trying to get me to try out these different digital cameras. And I, I just wasn't interested. They sort of held no romance to me at all. It just seemed not fun. You know, it seemed like virtual photography instead of photography. So, so uh, and, and we would try them. I mean, we'd have a shoot, and then we'd grab them to the medium format, backs, that kind of thing, and try it. But I didn't have my heart in it. After this, I just thought, you know what, maybe I should just try this and see, see if there's a simpler way to work. So uh, I will show another picture, I promise. The whole thing won't go. Don't worry. Um, and 
October of that year, I had gotten an assignment from ESPN to shoot a bunch of college basketball players around the country for like a college basketball preview issue. And it was like two weeks down the road, uh, just me and one assistant, and I decided I would just travel with a couple of battery-powered lights, and I rented the Canon, the 35 uh, millimeter camera, digital camera, for the two weeks, and I just thought, I'm not gonna bring anything else, I'm just gonna bring this. I have to commit to learning it, so I mean, I'm just gonna do it. And I, you know, I brought the manual and sat up in the hotel room and just figured it out, and I just thought I'll either love it or hate it, but at least I won't be really using the cameras I like and then taking a few grudging pictures with, you know, with this thing just to do it. So I did, and on the very first shoot, it was mind-boggling. I, could, I couldn't believe how much fun it was to use. I was stunned. I mean, it was something I didn't want to love at all. I thought it was great. Like, all of a sudden, I felt like I had roller skates on. You know, it was like I could move around, and I was on a tripod, and I could switch things up, and I was very fluid. I mean, obviously, we all started out shooting 35 millimeter. Now, I, was, I really hadn't used 35 for probably 10 years from the time. I had them, I just hadn't used them. And it was like, wow, this is great, you know? It was so much fun. And also the whole thing of, and the reason I did it on that job is I figured that if these guys are college guys, basketball players, they'll wait. Like if I screw up or I have to reboot or something, they can hang out, it's okay. And, but it didn't happen, it ended up being very smooth. In addition to which, instead of bringing six studios worth of lights to do six setups, I could do three or four setups at dusk with my one light. Like I would literally just shoot a picture, I didn't have to overshoot it the way I did with film, where you might have to shoot rolls and rolls of film to make sure you've kind of got it, varying little things. With this stuff, you can see it right away, so it's kind of like when you're done, you're done. I mean, the bad news, some people say, is that then you don't explore it further, but I think you can. To me, the good news is you don't have to overshoot something that doesn't require any more pictures, and you can actually move on to a whole new idea, which I think is invaluable. That's great. So I just thought it was terrific. And then maybe a month after that is when I shot this picture, which was a chairman of the board picture for a magazine. And I actually couldn't believe the quality of it. Again, this is like, with the, I'm not endorsing the Canons, because I just, I, but I just couldn't believe it, really. I've shot tons and tons and tons of like 8x10 and 11x14 and 4x5 film, and I'm used to the look of that. And where I really see it, as opposed to smaller formats, is like in the eyeball, where it looks really translucent and very sharp and not gritty or grainy on any level. And this was the digital file, and I swear this looks for sure as good as any 4x5 picture I've taken like that, easy. But the amazing thing to me with this stuff, like, there's another, you know, you just look at his skin, and it looks like skin. Like, people say, oh, digital looks real plasticky. It's like, that is such a load of crap. It's not plastic, it's fine. The digital stuff is fine. It doesn't have a look. It has whatever look you give it doesn't have an inherent look, I don't think. But the amazing thing is these two pictures are actually little pieces of that picture, right? And that's essentially a 35 millimeter frame. That, to me, is mind-boggling. Like, you don't need it sharper than that. I don't need more megapixels. If anything, I'd love, like, big fat pixels that were just the size of a dime, so I could use an 8x10 camera or something. That would be great. But I don't need more pixels. Like, they just, the computer gags on them. It just makes everything slow. So to me, I thought, I don't need more quality than this. And I was literally, the other thing with these pictures, for what it's worth, is I was actually hand-holding, hand-holding this camera with very, very, very dim lights. He was actually being lit by, see the rectangular light in his eye? He's actually being lit by like a little fluorescent light source that I have. So it's actually pretty dim. You know what I mean? So I'm actually hand-holding this camera probably at about a 30th or a 60th at 1.2. It's a very fast lens. That's crazy to be able to get a shot like that. You know, if I tried to do this picture on 4x5, which is probably what I would have done two months earlier, I wouldn't have been able to, I mean, it's not a great picture, but I would never have been able to vary it. It would have been more tedious. It would have required a lot more light. That was, to me, the huge thing. And also, having shot a lot of large format, when you're lighting with large format, it needs a lot of light. Like, you're sort of shooting in F11, F16, F22 land in that area. If you're shooting medium format, you might be shooting 5, 6, 8, 11, around there. 35 millimeter, all of a sudden you're shooting like F2. Well, you don't need much light to shoot there. That's, that's kind of great. So it was a big deal, a big, big deal. This was a cover I did for time uh, about a year